95.1. John Butler. John Butler here on The B, and my guest today is a, an actor from uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, you may recognize his face, and if you haven't seen uh, a couple of his movies, you, you need to you need to check him out. We're going to talk about him here in just a minute. Jeff Weber. Jeff, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. How you surviving the coronavirus shutdown? Uh, actually, pretty well. You know, I, I spend a lot of my time learning roles and writing songs and stuff anyway. So not much different here, except for obviously no productions going on. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, d tell us a little bit about your uh, your background before we get into uh, a couple of movies that you're uh, you're in. Uh, you you were you're, you're a Texas guy, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I I was actually not born in Texas, but I've gr grown up here most of my life. Thank God. I thank my lucky stars every day for that. Uh, my dad was a Navy guy, and so we moved around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, you spent a lot of time in New Braunfels. Yes, that's mainly where I grew up, New Braunfels, yeah. Texas. And live in Austin now. I live in Austin now. Love it. Love so, it. Yeah, I've been here for, uh, I've been in Austin for five, six years, you know. Right. And as an actor, it's kind of where I have to be, if I because I do not want to live anywhere besides Texas. Yeah. And so as an actor, this is the city for me to be in. Yeah, well, I went to UT there, so I uh, have a special place in my heart for Austin. Book them horns. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a good friend the golf coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's talk about your, uh, your, your movie that's been out for, for a little while here. It's called A Stretch of Texas Ground. Yeah. Tell us, tell us, tell us about it. Well, it was it was my first leading role in a film. It's a very controversial film. Um, it's kind of politically fueled. And, uh, you know, as an actor, you take roles, not necessarily that you agree or disagree with. You just do it because maybe they're interesting and you get paid yeah. to do it. Yeah. Politically, uh, politically fueled how? Uh, it's a it's kind of an anti-war theme. Um, and it wait, kind of wait a minute, wait a minute. You're against a war? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm so terrible to be against a war. Jeez. Yeah. It's, a, it's kind of a thought-provoking um, film about war and its, and its effects, you know, uh, on both sides or all sides or whatever it is. I just really liked the character. He's a Texas sheriff, uh, Sheriff Joe. Yeah. Uh, everybody calls me Sheriff Joe now. Um, so I'll have to shake that stigma off at some point. But um, the, the, my character was really cool, and that's why I took the role, and because uh, he was a very interesting guy. And uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a long it's a long movie. <laughs> um, and how, 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 how long? How long are we talking here? It's, it's it's like an hour and thirty minutes. You know, hour yeah. hour thirty or hour forty. I think, I can't remember, but yeah, uh, it was great experience and it was my first leading role and I've since had a, you know had a few since then yeah. and uh, yeah it was it was enjoyable if you can if you can stomach political uh thriller I don't know what it's I don't even know what genre it is I guess it's a thriller yeah uh, then you know check it out if not if you're not into controversy or looking at both sides of a of a subject and you know you may as well pass it by yeah 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 well I mean people who look at both sides of a subject is, is rare today. Yeah, it really is. It truly is. And, and, I, and I had a great time. We, it premiered in Hollywood uh, at, an old, at a really cool Limley movie theater um, on uh, Wilshire Boulevard wow. back in February of like 19. That was my first time. I mean, it was cool because I was sitting there and I was like, you know, how many people get the opportunity to come to Hollywood yeah. watch a premiere of a movie that they starred in and I and and drink a beer afterwards up in the Sunset Tower Hotel and then I had a an, a, a, an article from Texas Monthly and then one from the LA Times both on each side of me and I was like you know this is pretty cool this is pretty yeah cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah no kidding no kidding well, congratulations <laughs> I mean no that's a that's a very Thanks. cool experience uh, how did Okay, it was cool, but how did it feel? What were you thinking when this was happening? During the movie, during the filming, or after? It, 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 during, during the you know going to Hollywood and the premiere and 
You know, I, I, it was, I was just thinking about how blessed I am and how blessed I've been my whole life. And, you know, we always are our toughest critic to ourselves and, and all that. So it was interesting. It was an interesting bag of emotions that I went through thinking, you know, the whole time I was like, this really isn't that big of a deal. It's an indie film. You know, I think it was like a million dollar budget or maybe a little bit over. I, so I was just trying to soak it up every second and go, you know what? Not many people get the opportunity to do this. And I've been a very blessed guy my whole life with just things happening for me. So I think thankful is the big, is the biggest emotion I went through. And I have, you know, at the time I was like, this movie's never going to go anywhere, do anything. It's not a big deal, whatever. I, I've won five best male actor awards at film festivals and my co-star Eunice Zadi, who's a very good friend of mine now. He's a great actor, great actor. He, uh, he's also won uh, best male actor. And then we've won, we've won best acting duo. So you just never know where things are going to take you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. As uh, Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots forward. So yeah, so always interesting right. how they do connect when you look back. So yeah. at what point did you decide to be an actor? So I'm going to answer a bunch of different questions all at once here, because it's going to cover music and some other of my background. When I was a little kid, um, you know, my dad moved us around a lot and I can't remember where it was, uh, but I, I always remember watching. I love old movies. I love Cary Grant. I love Dean Martin. And as a kid, I always thought, you know, as I'm watching these movies, I want to be a cowboy. I want to be a pilot. I want to be a singer and I want to be an actor. And somehow, some way in my life, I've managed to cover all four of those. You wow. know, because yeah. I was a rodeo cowboy, professional rodeo cowboy for no a while. No kidding. I didn't I, know that. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, got my pilot's license. Um, and I started music singing when I was rodeoing, as a matter of fact, because a friend of mine had bought a guitar and taught himself how to play. And he told me I should do the same. And so I did. Uh, and that was fun. And then it was after that, I was like, you know, and I had, I had had a couple of record deals in the early two thousands with an independent label in Nashville. And then RCA signed me to a, 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 a demo deal, which yeah. I did. We released a couple of singles. They didn't do that well. Um, and then I took a huge hiatus from the music business and then <clears throat> decided to move to Austin and become an actor. And I've just been working really hard at it. And, um, things are falling together so far. I've been able to make a living doing all those things that I've loved throughout my life. So very, very blessed. Very yeah, blessed. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Um, when you've got a, a new movie that's just come out on Amazon today, yeah. where, as we're talking, uh, deadly charter, interesting name. Yeah. So obviously, obviously it's about a fishing trip, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a fishing trip. <laughs> fall overboard it's about a five minute long movie and i and nobody ever sees me again no yeah, yeah. Uh, a guy from a, a good friend of mine that i worked on another movie with he's from grand prairie texas he wrote it and it was his directorial debut it's a it's also a screen actors guild film uh and it's i don't even this one isn't it's an award win it's already won you know an award or two Wow. Uh, and it's just come out because we just filmed it last year, but yeah. I got notification this morning that it's out on Amazon prime video. They picked it up and, uh, it's, it's about, uh, I wish I could, I, I wish I had the tagline of the film. I don't remember it. It's, it's, uh, two greedy cousins are fighting over a family inheritance, Yeah, but there's a charter that was written back in 1932 that kind of gets in the way and it takes a, it takes a very funny and ironic turn at the end. Well, we'll, uh, we'll check it out on Amazon yeah. prime deadly. Uh, it's deadly. only like 40 deadly minutes. Charter. Yeah. 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's an easy watch. <laughs> well, uh, nowadays, especially with the, uh, shutdown, people are watching more and more videos. So hopefully yeah. you'll check that out. Okay. Well, uh, before we go, let's talk about your, your music, your, your yep. singing career. Uh, you've got a, and a, a couple of couple of great songs out. One is Mr. Abraham. Correct. Give us the background yeah. on Mr. Abraham. You wrote this too, right? I did not. My bandmate okay. Paul Steve wrote this. He was inspired by a book that he was reading, and he 
very cleverly and brilliantly came up with a song about Abraham Lincoln's death train after he was assassinated and the journey that it took the same the same route it took from DC to Springfield as it did when he was, you know, came yeah. to Washington. Yeah. And not, not many people in those days had enough money to go to the big cities. They all went to the rails and watched the train go by so they could see the commander in chief. So that's what that's about. He was kind enough to let me sing it on the album. And we're actually going to release that as a single for uh, veterans day. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, We'll look forward to, to playing that on the air. And uh, awesome. another another song you have is uh, uh, "Talk to Me with Your Eyes." Yes. What's the yeah, background on? What's the background on "Talk to Me with Your Eyes"? Cool tune. Um, I wrote it with a couple of Nashville cats when I had my deal back in the early two thousands. It never saw the light of day. But when I got together with Pete and Paul and we formed Shameless Plug, the Radio Gunners. Hey, we love the Radio Gunners. <laughs> um, that, that was one of the songs I brought to the table. I'd totally forgotten about it, but now, you know, getting back into music um, and they loved it. So we decided to, to put it on the record and it's our first single. We released it a few weeks ago in the U S and it's doing very well. It's getting a lot of spins. People are seeming to like it a lot and it's going to be re uh, released in Europe next, uh, I think Monday or Tuesday. You're also a model for uh, Dakovis boots. Yeah, yeah, I just did an ad for Tacovis Boots. Are you familiar with them? They're a great company. Oh, I, I am. I, uh, I'm actually lusting after a pair of their boots. I, maybe you can get me a discount. <laughs> yeah, I can get myself a discount, but um, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to, um, I'll tag your show and Tacovis in the same post. Those people, are, and then maybe we can make the connection there. They, they are a great, great group of people. What a great team that guy has assembled at Tacovis. And it was a pleasure working with them. Um, you know, as a, as a model, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what people <laughs> want me to do it, but, uh, apparently they don't see too well, but, uh, yeah, they, they that was, they were a great company and, yeah. you know, I do print jobs for a lot of different companies. Uh, but that's, I gotta say that was probably my favorite. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I actually heard about them word of mouth. Uh, you know, which is the best way you can hear about a product, but uh, from a couple of buddies who had bought uh, boots from them and bragging about them. And so I'm yeah. saving up. I'm saving up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff, enjoyed talking with you. I really enjoyed being on and thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to really say thank you. You know, the, the folks like you that uh, take an interest in, in people like me and what we do, that's the whole driving force behind why any band or any actor or anything ever gets out there because without you people, we don't work. And so very much thank you. Gratitude, yeah. gratitude, gratitude. Thank you. Hey, well, uh, Jeff, keep us posted on, on, on your career and uh, new songs that come out and we can okay. play on the beat. So uh, thank you. All right. I guess it's been Jeff Weber, uh, actor, songwriter, singer, Boot modeler. <laughs> <laughs> bootlegger. <laughs> and bootlegger. <laughs> this is John Butler on The Bee. 95.1. John Butler. The Bee. The Bee. John, thanks so much for having me, man.